Hi there, welcome back. In this lecture, we're gonna learn about Azure Pravi DNS. Before we jump into Pravi DNS, let's refresh what exactly DNS. Azure DNS is a hosting service for DNS domains that provides a name resolution for using Microsoft Azure infrastructure. So in the back end, it will be purely Microsoft infrastructure. So, so you have a reliability and great performance that offers by Microsoft and uh, concerns for any of the security concerns will be taken care of by uh, applying Azure RBAC and also you can monitor the activity logs and you can also go for resource locking all that other um, DNS specific configurations that you can easily do it uh, along with the security that extra offers from Microsoft Azure portal with the configurations of within Microsoft Azure like you can go for alias record sets and you can use the records to work with your as your public IP addresses for as your traffic manager profile or maybe CDN endpoints so you will be getting all the advantages if at all you have a single management console right so that's where the as your DNS comes into the place where you can manage your existing DNS also directly from the Azure portal this makes the ease of use and also you can integrate your applications that require automated DNS management can easily integrate with the services like REST API or maybe the own SDKs can be integrated so it's easy so just to conclude that uh, for what exactly as your DNS so as your DNS can host your domains in Azure portal or within the Azure infrastructure you can manage your DNS records by using the as your credentials you no need to have additional credentials so you can integrate your APIs tools and uh, even the building also makes it easy you will have the building uh, just like for other Azure services and you cannot use as your DNS to buy directly a domain name so there is a different method like you can go and buy app service so app services for domain and then use it here uh, for your own domain name purpose or you can go and buy from a third party domain name registers like GoDaddy or Namecheap uh, somewhere and you can use it. So now let's talk about Azure Private DNS. So Azure Private DNS provides a reliable and secure DNS service to manage and resolve your domain names within your virtual network. Uh, without need to add any custom DNS solutions so you no need to depend on somebody's alternative DNS solutions instead of that you can use existing Microsoft uh, DNS service for private DNS zones creation and you can use your own custom domain name rather than the as you provide names available today let's say you have your own um, you can use definitely a, your own Joan, for example, for this machine, you can use for .contestor.com and this can be resolved within the your VNet, so it doesn't go outside. So that's where we talk about the private Azure DNS zones, and you can link all these. So this is something called a link concept, which we are going to talk, and there is something called auto registration, which we are going to talk. So when we talk about the auto register, the DNS Jones will have automated records that's a record gets created automatically within the DNS which we are gonna uh, have a look on in the upcoming demo uh, within this lecture and also uh, for the the more important point here is the records that are contains a private DNS what we refer here are not gonna resolvable from internet so it doesn't work over the internet because it's a private you will have your own uh, DNS zones which are a private so let's jump into the portal and have a look on it how to create and later point we will jump into different scenarios uh, and we will come back here how these scenarios will be useful in the real world to create private DNS all we have to do is go to the all resources and search for the DNS you will see here one for the public DNS other one would be the private DNS so the public one is just the DNS zone uh, it means like you have a domain name in my case for example paddymagic.com uh, if that domain is registered I would uh, go here and do the changes but whereas a private DNS let's say you have different VMs 
and that needs to be resolved within that uh, virtual network or maybe cross virtual networks or uh, in that situation you are going to use the private DNS zone so just click on the private DNS zone I would click on uh, setting up my uh, DNS zone so I have already a resource group code created and I'll just choose that DNS demo and uh, here I can give here my private zone name let's say this is the zone like a uh, private dot uh, maybe paddymatty.com so this is going to be completely within the vna communication uh, or the scenarios that we are going to talk here if you see here all these scenarios uh, which is gonna uh, scope up let's see this can be within the single vnet or it can be cross vnet and uh, this can be with your uh, split with the horizon uh, functionality which we are gonna come up in a minute or so but the private zone uh, instance name needs to be created so this is going to be your zone so simply review it and give the tags tags are very important in terms of the billing and enter the tag information and click on create so this gets created the next step is to associate your virtual networks with your private zone so what we're gonna do is uh, let me show you here if I just go to the private.dns zone and uh, within this if I just go to the virtual network linking so I have to link up any of the virtual networks so for this demo I did not created any of the virtual networks because I just wanted to assign this complete uh, virtual networks or for this demo so I'm gonna create a new virtual network so I just go to my home and simply here virtual networks so within this vnet click on add and then give your resource group name and I'm gonna choose my vnet name as the DNS demo vnet1 and coming back to the IP configuration so I just wanted to you know go for the default I am not uh, fancy here to look at a great design so I'll just use these the existing or the default address space and the sub space uh, because in the next step I'm gonna create actual virtual machines based on those vnet so choose the tags tags are really important again and click on create so that's it uh, it's going to create the virtual network once the virtual network is created uh, we will be provisioning at least two virtual machines to just to you know demonstrate how the auto registration works how to create the DNS records and all that so I'll just go to the vnet and uh, I can actually provision if you see here it's, it's the normal address space in the subnet so what we can do is we can just simply go to the DNS and that's again private DNS so within this I can go back to virtual network linking and this time I can click add and I can give a name actually here which is uh, link name so in my case I have a lot of other um, vnets but out of that uh, for this vnet which we have created for this demo purpose is the DNS demo vnet one we just created and I'll choose this and as you take the enable auto registration what happens is as soon as I provision any of the vnet it itself creates a DNS record for you with the private IP address so you no need to worry about uh, creating a record uh, for each and every applic uh, applications or maybe each and every virtual machine in this case so that's easy so I'll just uh, take this enable auto registration and I'll give here uh, maybe my vnet uh, for this as DNS a vnet demo and I'll simply click on OK so that would actually uh, associate the vnet in case you don't have a vnet access within your azure portal let's say this happens actually in the production like you don't have every access so every resource access you do you will not have in that situation you simply have to you know, select this and give the resource id uh, that was given by your azure admin and uh, that would actually enables the linking so I'm clicking on OK so I, since I know it so this would actually enables the backend linking so why we are doing all this is just for the automated uh, records to be created if not you will actually create your records directly from here let's say you have here if you see here as your private dot uh, private DNS host dot Microsoft dot com and then you can create your records for your mission let's say you have a VM called VM01 and you would be giving has the VM01 and their 
private IP may be if it is 10 dot 10 dot maybe to example you would give that IP or if it is a not a record you would actually create here like C name or IP version 6 or MX PT or SRV text all type of records are available and you can create it so if at all you wanted to create on your own this is the place where you create it so very similar that you have a DNS on your on premises similar type of records can be created here so let's go back to the our virtual network and try to create two different virtual machines and the linking is successfully created now we will go back and we'll create a two virtual machine so I'll just choose new virtual machine here I'll click on new virtual machine this is going to create a new VM and fill the required things like a resource group and the computer name all that uh, information and along with the username and the password and go for the disk which are default and the networking make sure that you take in the associated vnet which we have associated with our private dns zone so in my case the same vnet which i have taken and then click on next uh, for any management and advanced tags and review it finally and create it that would actually create a vm i'm going to repeat the same step for another vm also so i submit it here for the creation i'm going back to another virtual machine and trying to create similar uh, steps to be followed and give the new vm i'll quickly fill the required information for creating the virtual machine too so i'll just take the windows server and user id and password disks which are default but make sure that in the networking the link to virtual network to be selected because uh, that's where it's gonna look for the auto registration and all other configurations so i'm gonna review it and i'm gonna click on create so that could that would actually create the required configuration just take this review and create just submit it create button so it takes some time to create two virtual machines now the two virtual machines has been successfully created I'll just go back to these two virtual machines and I'll just connect it I'll be fast forwarding this entire video uh, because I'm just trying to connect to this uh, demo VM02 as well as the VM01 and later we would be configuring ICMP protocol to be enabled and then if both can be in a pinging or not that is the basic thing because uh, we just wanted to check all these basic things that's it. We'll just configure ICMP protocol to be LO so we're in the firewall just click on the advanced view and enable file and print uh, or just the ICMP that would allow the ping configuration so I'll just uh, ping to the other side machine I've done the same thing and other machine also here so if I just go ahead and ping here so I'm, I'm actually getting here the response for these machines so the ping is established let's go back to our Azure DNS actual demo where we wanted to test it click on the private DNS and select your DNS and go to the home view and you should be able to see here uh, by default the required records has been automatically created this is just because we have already associated here the VNet with the auto configuration if at all I have not taken this checkbox what I have to do is I have to create for all the virtual machines manually the a record so that's how it's gonna work so let's say if I want to create some more records all I can do is I can go ahead and create let's say I am talking about maybe a VM03 I can create here another IP address like 10.1 dot maybe whatever the series of the IP that have I can give here this would actually resolve this VM03 to this IP so that's how it's gonna work so I'll just click on OK and uh, if I just go back to my VM03 uh, as try to resolve it should be able to ping to this machine because both have the same IP let's go back to the VM01 uh, this is a VM01 and try to ping here it should actually ping oops that's wrong so it, I'm able to ping to the VM03 to the same IP which is actually you can even look up and it's look up and you can put it here your 10.1.0.5 so it should show here the record also DNS 
demo vm02 is the actual computer name so this is how you're going to work with the dns uh, for the private dns and also other important point here to note that uh, we are actually talking about the complete dns configuration on top of your virtual network let's say you have your vnet and you wanted to configure additional dns servers or your custom managed dns servers you can go ahead and configure here by default azure is uh, completely managed this so this is the recommended or easiest way of doing we did also we talked about different uh, scenarios where when to use what kind of as you provider dns or go for our custom dns or private zones all that we already talked in the recommendations so make sure that you check out that lecture and if at all you have some third party dns uh, providers you simply have to go ahead and configure their IP address so that that would actually take care of the appliance based uh, configuration would go and talk with that DNS service or if you hosted your own infrastructure as a service DNS uh, by spinning up some of the VM then you would uh, give here your custom DNS server IP address so that the entire virtual machines will be completely communicated uh, with this by using with this custom DNS server that's how it's gonna work uh, let's say these two machines are connected uh, so these two will go ahead and use that custom DNS that you have configured here if you go back to the scenarios that we have so far demonstrated within this lecture is very similar to this like instead of the network A we have here a VNet with uh, two different VMs and these VNets uh, VNet also have auto register so what happens is these two virtual machines has been auto register with a specific IP address that's what we have done so this scenario is uh, typically for a single virtual network what if you are looking for a two different uh, virtual networks let's say you have a virtual network one and two so in that situation also uh, you can have here if you see here for a few of them uh, different vnet uh, or within this vnet what are the different virtual machines you have here so these are not actually uh, manually created records so if you are not enabled for your private zones the auto generate the record so what would happen is it's gonna uh, you you have to create manually and then the name resolution can happen that's how it's gonna work and uh, other scenario is the split scenario and uh, this is where uh, in this case where you wanted to realize your dns uh, to be you know behave like depends on where the client sits inside your as you are outside of the internet for the same dns zone for example you may have a private and public versions of your application that has different functionality or behavior uh, but you wanted to use them uh, within your domain for the both the versions in this scenario it can uh, configure uh, from the outside as a different and inside as a different and uh, that's how you're going to actually configure your split horizontal functionality you can check out the link which is um, which i have uh, associated within this lecture for the resource section and that really helps you to understand more about the private DNS scenarios that can be useful for you. I hope this entire lectures are useful for you. Thank you for watching this. Please give me feedback on my course by writing a review that really helps me. Thank you.